And while our next guest genuinely puts the Irish in fighting Irish, Declan Kybert is the Donald and Marilyn Keogh Professor of Irish Studies and the Keogh Naughton Institute for Irish Studies, as well as a professor of English here at Notre Dame. He's a leading international authority on the literature of Ireland, and he's joining us all the way from Galway, Ireland, via the Notre Dame Day Hotline. Declan, thank you so much for joining us. It's very nice to be on the program. What has you in Ireland right now? Well, I'm always in Ireland in the springtime <laughs> of the year. I, I teach my courses in ND in the fall in South, but in the spring semester I teach a course on modern Irish literature from Yeats right up to the present uh, in O'Connell House, which is the ND gateway in Dublin. And uh, ordinarily I would be in Dublin doing that, but I'm at a festival of literature called Court here in Galway for these two days. Court is the old Gaelic word for court, and in Gaelic Ireland there were courts of poetry which met every so often, and we have not just poets, but all kinds of writers here in Galway this week. Oh, fabulous. And before coming to Notre Dame, you were a longtime faculty member at the University College in Dublin. So what drew you to Notre Dame? Well, I was over 30 years in UCD, as we call it, Joyce's Old University. And I was a professor of English there, of Anglo-Irish literature, the Irish writers in the English language. Um, it was brilliant. I had wonderful students, and you can see that from the time I spent, the length of time. But uh, I've always been interested in the Irish language as well. And before I went to UCD, I had lectured in Irish in Trinity. The great attraction of ND was that you could combine both um, without... Uh, you know, feeling one had to choose one over the other. The Irish studies in ND combined both Irish and English languages. So as I liked to say, I became amphibious when I went to <laughs> Indiana. The switch hitter, so to speak. So you also split your time, as you mentioned, between the South Bend campus and Notre Dame's O'Connell House in Dublin. So how would you say that spending a decent amount of time in two culturally different atmospheres affects your approach to teaching? Well, um, the undergraduate teaching here in Dublin, which as you know I did for many years, is a bit more lecture driven, hierarchical, students taking notes. I was very struck as soon as I arrived in ND by, well one thing was the greater frequency of classes. You meet students at least twice a week, but also you get to know them very well and it's more like a seminar type debate. So um, that was good for me because uh, there was more toing and froing. I mean we Irish are supposed to have the gift of the gap, but we are also monologists. Uh, we have very strong transmitters and sometimes weaker receivers, and this is particularly true of professors, of course. As, as, as you know, in Ireland we used to say a professor is a person, usually male, who talks in other people's sleep. So it was very good for me to have a more conversational style of, style of classroom, and that was one big difference. I think the other big difference is at postgrad level in the length of seminars. You know, some of the seminars I have in ND uh, in South Bend would last up to three hours. And I don't think there's a student in Western Europe, even a bright graduate student, who could last in a room for more than two. This is real marathon running in ND. <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting. How do you think your time in South Bend informs your perspective on current events happening in Ireland across the pond? Well... I'm very struck by the similarity of some of the social difficulties. I mean, obviously, Indiana, more generally, is part of what was called flyover territory after the last election. And I suppose there's a sense in many parts of the U.S. that some of the great cities are flourishing at the expense of rural communities. And although Ireland has recovered from their recent crash to some degree, I think it would also be true to say here that Dublin is in recovery mode, but many parts of regional and rural Ireland are still a bit shut down. So I, I'm very aware of these similarities. Uh, this would also be true of parts of England, north of Watford, north of London. So um, there's an amazing similarity in a way in the frustrations, especially uh, 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 among uh, not just rural communities, but more specifically young males in the rural communities who I think often feel a bit despondent about the future. And uh, quite a number of recent works of Irish literature have in fact focused on this theme. Uh, 
played by Sebastian Barry, who is one of the speakers at this festival here in Galway, called Chronicles of Ballycumber, was about the instance of suicide among younger males in the rural community. And you have your own book coming out, Professor. Well, yes, my book, After Ireland, is about, in a way, these crises and about the way in which Irish writers predicted many of these emergencies. Basically, my argument is that literature is an early warning system so that, say, the problems of child abuse that emerged in journalistic reports in the last 20 years here in Ireland, I, I show how these were, in a way, predicted in the plays of Samuel Beckett or novels by John McGahern. And in the same way, you can argue that the economic crash of 07 and 08, which in Ireland was heavily connected with uh, kind of mad speculation in building and selling, selling houses to one another, there are plays back as far as the 1970s and 80s by playwrights like Brian Friel and Tom Murphy, which predicted this and even made links between speculative builders and Chicago-style gangsters. So in a sense, although these things surprised us when they emerged in journalism in the last decade or two, you can excavate them very, very far back in the modern literature of Ireland. Interesting indeed. Thank you so much, Professor Kybert. Thank you for speaking with us.